Okay, so let's let's continue to try to understand this idea of torque. So if we've got this um, rod over here that is uh, suspended at a pivot point that's not at the center, it's over there, so it's off center, okay? And we've got these two uh, inertias, okay? Two weights, one and two. As you can see, two is uh, smaller than one, so the idea is that this has a smaller inertia than one, and yet it's balanced, okay? So it's in equilibrium, it's not accelerating up or down, and it's not um, accelerating in the rotational sense, okay? It is balanced. So, um, what do we know about this? Well, we know that um, intuitively you know that this uh, inertia, this weight, would cause a force down, which would cause a counterclockwise rotation, and this weight would cause a force down, which would cause a clockwise rotation. So this one would cause a counterclockwise, this one would cause a clockwise. And so because this guy is uh, balanced, it's in equilibrium, what this tells us is that even though these Forces are not the same. They're not the same force. What we know is that the torques, torque 1, must equal torque 2. Okay? In the same way, if a, an object has two forces, let's, let's draw it over here. Where is my pen? Let's get some, some white space over here. In the same way as F1 and F2, if this guy's acceleration is zero, then we know that F1 equals F2. Okay? The magnitudes, of course, the magnitudes equal each other. Well, in the same way, if you've got an F1 over here and an F2 and the rotational motion is the acceleration there is zero then we know that f1 r1 is equal to f2 r2 so these are the torques the torques are equal in the rotational sense okay all right so so that's the one thing the next question we want to ask is um, what happens when forces exerted on the rod or on anything are uh, not perpendicular? What happens when um, forces are not perpendicular to, uh, to this rod? Say now force is acting in this direction or over there or there, right? There, we need to see that there are two equivalent ways of determining the, the, the torque caused by that force that is not applied perpendicular to, that, uh, to the rod. So let's have a look here. The one is, so here's the rod. Um, there's its axis of rotation. We have chosen arbitrarily counterclockwise as positive. Remember, you can choose counterclockwise as positive or clockwise as positive. All right. Now, in this case, at the end of the rod, the force is acting at an angle theta to the horizontal. So how are we going to determine the torque caused by this force? There are two ways. The one is, remember, well, first of all, remember it is the perpendicular uh, component of the force. This, this is the one way. The perpendicular component of the force is the only component that is causing a torque. The parallel component, it passes, the line of action passes through the point of, of rotation. And so it has no lever arm. And so this component is not causing any torque. Whereas this component does have a lever arm, and this is a perpendicular lever arm. So this component is the one way. So what is this? We calculate F sine theta 
is the component we multiply by this um, lever arm to get the torque. Now the other way, which is identical, well, in, in magnitude, but different in, in, in how you calculate it, is instead of breaking up the force into its perpendicular and parallel components, we leave the force alone. Okay, we just say it's, it's, it's being applied to this uh, rod um, at this angle. But then what do we change? We change the, this distance, this lever arm. Well, this is technically not a lever arm. But we calculate the lever arm based on the distance. Okay? So what you do is, you draw the line of action, you extend the line of action like this. And then from this point of application, you draw a perpendicular line to this line of action. And so now, to calculate the torque caused by this force, we multiply the force by this perpendicular distance. Now these are identical. Either we calculate the perpendicular component of the force and multiply it by R, or we calculate the perpendicular component of the distance and multiply it by F. Okay? So the, um, the torque caused by a force exerted on an object is the product of the magnitude of the force and its lever arm distance. It can be written equivalently as R F perpendicular or R perpendicular times F. Okay, guys, does that make sense? These are identical. They will give you the same torque. Now, the other important thing to take note of, now that, we've be, now that we know how to calculate the magnitude, we also need to see that there is, just as in when we are working in a linear fashion, and we choose one direction as positive, say to the right is positive x and to the up is uh, and upwards is positive y. Well, and remember that's just a convention, right? You can choose left as positive and down as positive. Well, in the same way here, we have chosen, you have selected counterclockwise as positive. So this force then causes a counterclockwise rotation. A counterclockwise rotation. So this will be a positive torque because it is in the same direction as the, the direction um, that we chose as positive. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so if you go back to this guy, um, and we choose counterclockwise as positive, then this guy is going to cause this uh, rod to want to rotate clockwise. So this is causing a negative torque because it's in the opposite direction as the one that you chose. Whereas this force is causing a positive torque because it's in the same direction that uh, that we have chosen okay so basically then you're gonna get this let's just go down you're gonna get if you add up the two torques you're gonna get R1 F1 plus minus R2 F2 does that make sense R1 R1 F1 is plus it's positive minus R2 F2 that if you're adding up the torques about that point okay so this one will be a negative one okay I hope this is helping